Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today we are making the All Around Tote. It is a pattern by So Many Creations and we're going to go through the visual instructions on how to do it. All the measurements and cutting instructions and what you need for it. That is available over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. We've got a link to it in the video description down below. It's called the All Around Tote. We also have quilt kits, or not quilt kits because it's a bag. We have bag kits over on the website as well and almost all of this is reorderable. So so if you see it and it's sold out, join the wait list to know when it comes back in stock. I'm really excited about today's uh, project because this is a bag that I'm actually going to use as opposed to just have to look pretty in the backdrop of our new studio. I'm also really excited. This is the first video we're doing in our new studio. So we're probably going to be tweaking a few things with the lighting as we go along and learn a few things about working in this space. This is our brick and mortar quilt shop, which we closed at the beginning of the pandemic. And we're just shopping online to keep our family and our employees safe. And this wasn't getting used and we needed some more space in our house. So we transformed the previous video set into a playroom for my kids. You can watch a video on that. And a little bit later, we're going to be posting a video on how I folded all the quilts to fit perfectly in these shelves. So you can check that out. We're planning a lot more videos for you in 2020. All right, so there's a lot of steps to make this bag. And you can use it when you're following along with the written instructions that you get with the pattern. However, we're going to put some time codes for each of the steps in the video description down below. So we'll make sure to have that for you. So if you know how to do a couple things, but you want to just see in, in actual real time it happening for a certain step, you can skip straight to that area. All right, I'm super in love with this bag. It has a divided liner on the inside. We have not one, but two zippered pockets. It has got eight pockets on the outside and a nice little flap that goes over top to keep everything nice and safe. So really cool, really awesome. And make sure you go check that out. All right, so step one is going to be cutting all your pieces and all of that is available in the pattern. And that is the all around tote by So Many Creations. So I'm gonna do one that has batting, fusible batting and fusible interfacing for it. And I'm gonna show you how to do both of those. Most of the peaches just have fusible interfacing so you don't have to worry about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm lining it up with the shiny side of that fusible interfacing facing up. That's the part that has the glue on it. We're going to then place your fabric on top of that. The reason why you wanna do it this way with the fabric on top is one, you're gonna be closer to the glue so it'll adhere better. And two, it will have less likely to uh, gum up your iron because if you accidentally flip it around, you've just stuck it to your ironing surface and that is fixable. It's a lot harder to get glue off of your iron. All right, so once I've got my corners all lined up, I'm just going to kind of work my way around and getting those corners nice and down. And I just kind of hold the iron in place for a little bit. Then I'm gonna focus on my ends. And your corners and your edges are the most important part to really get stuck down. All right, that's stuck down pretty good. So now I'm going to add on the fusible interfacing. Again, that's gonna be shiny side up. That's the side that has the glue on it. I am gonna arrange it though on the other side first, and I'm going to get it to where it's centered. Now your fusible batting is gonna be a little bit smaller, and that's so that you don't have a ton of bulk in your seam allowances. So just close enough is good enough for this. Once I've got it set about where I want it to be, I'm gonna flip that over. And you can either use steam in your iron or what I like to do is use my spray mister to go over that. And that will help it get a nice, good fuse without it getting wrinkly and bubbly. So I'm just working my way out. And again, you only have a couple of pieces that call for the fusible batting as well. Most of them just need fusible interfacing and there are some that don't have any at all. So make sure you're paying attention to your pattern instructions and it's really clear what needs interfacing, what doesn't, and how to prepare these pieces. But it's going to go a lot faster if you take your time to prep everything ahead of time and get all your pieces ready to sew together before you sew anything. Now I'm choosing to use some wax canvas for my handles and my bag bottom. You could use cork for this or you could use regular quilting cotton. Just make sure you follow the instructions for each one. Wax canvas is really fun because it is water resistant, which means if it gets a little wet or gets set on the ground and, and you know it's winter, you have some stuff on it, 
um, it uh, will not get all wet on the inside, which is fabulous. Um, the one thing that's a little strange about it is wherever it's been folded, it gets kind of like a white crease line on it. And you can take a, so like when you open up the package, when you order it, it's gonna have these crease marks or this has been folded for a long time here, so it hasn't. You can consider that character and just let it be and then it will get more and more of those as you use it. Or you can always take a hair dryer and blow on it and for a little while until that goes away. It's up to you. All right, so the really cool thing about wax canvas is one, you're not really gonna wanna iron it because it's gonna get all over your iron, but it's really easy to do the fold for the bag handles. All I have to do is just smooth it out with my hand and it holds its shape. This was so cool when I tried it for the first time. Now, if you were using cork or, uh, well, you wouldn't necessarily iron the cork for this, but if you were using fabric, you would want to iron that to make it happen. Um, for the this one, I also need to turn it in one more. If you're using cork, by the way, you don't need to do the turn in the second time. You can just half the width of it and just do one fold over and then do your top stitching. All right, now for this next part, what I like to do is fold it over and kind of make sure that I've got nice even edges as I'm going. All right, leave it that one final fold over, make sure I've got nice even edges on those folded edges. And again, you would do this with an iron if you were using regular quilting cotton and you would have applied interfacing to it to make it stiffer so you have a nice strong bag handle. All right, so now I'm ready to top stitch this. I'm gonna increase my top stitching length to 3.0. It gives it a more professional, nicer appearance and you're gonna wanna make sure that you use a jeans needle. Even if you're not using cork or anything like that, you are going through a lot of layers of interfacing and so, and especially once you have all of these in, you just need that extra little bit of strength to make it through. So we're gonna sew two top stitchings on each side. So the first one, I wanna sew an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna push my needle all the way as far as it will go over to the right on my sewing machine. And then I'm going to just start stitching, make sure I increase that to 3.0. So I got a nice, long, nice top stitch. And then I'm just really focused on making sure that I keep the edge of my stitch nice and even here. That'll give you nice, good results. What I like to do is just kind of hold my hand in place and that helps it keep nice and straight because it's kind of like running against my finger there and not letting it go any further over to the side. While I've got my needle set up for the eighth of an inch stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and sew down the other side as well. All right, I'm gonna move everything back to the regular quarter inch and I kind of fudged this a little bit. I didn't like the distance when it was just that eighth of an inch, so I moved it back a few extra stitches. So it's all your own personal preference. What matters is that you are as consistent as you can be and to have even spacing between your stitches. The last page of your instructions includes a template. Now, if you want, you can take this and you can make a cardboard copy or use a mylar. That's a really good one if you wanna make this multiple times. I'm just gonna use the one that's in here because I like to have new bags all the time and have new ones. So we'll come out, try the new patterns. All right, so you've got two pieces for your flap template, one for the front and one for the back. The one for the front is going to be the one that has the fusible batting on it as well. I'm actually gonna flip these over so it's a little easy for you guys to see as I trace around. What you're gonna do is I'm just gonna save myself some time here, line up those corners, and I'm actually gonna clip that together. I think that's gonna be the fastest way to get that where I want it to be. Now I'm gonna use my friction gel pen to just trace around. Now I can cut right on the line that I drew. Now I wanna repeat all of that with my other template. 
All right, now we're gonna arrange these right sides together and we're gonna sew around the curved part. We'll leave the straight edge here open for turning and I'm going to use no pins for this entire project. I'm going to use my quilters clips. They work a lot better whenever you're dealing with really bulky items like we are here. Now, Jessica Vandenberg, who is the brains behind so many creations, she is a quilter. So she's going to write it with quilters in mind. And that means that most of these seam allowances are quarter inch seams. Give that a turn. You guys want to kind of go just a little bit slower around the curves, but I find that bee dogs like to turn it for you. Just try and keep it nice and smooth. Now I did back stitch at the beginning and end because we need to turn this right side out. And with all of that interfacing and the fusible batting, it's gonna be a little bulky, so I don't wanna accidentally rip those seams open. Now we're gonna give this a press. I'm gonna go ahead and spritz it real good first. That way I can get a really, really nice flat seam. Now we're gonna top stitch around the outside edge. Again, leave this top part open. We'll stitch that in later. And again, I'm gonna increase my stitch length to 3.0 for this step. So now we need to install the female side of our oval twist lock to this piece. I've got the side that has the batting face up and just so you know, the female side is the side with the hole. I know, it, you know, it is what it is. So this is the male side here and you use this bracket with that as well. I'm gonna set that to the side. We don't need that just yet. All right, so the first thing I need to do is unscrew this. I picked up a set of really tiny little screwdrivers just at the hardware store and they come really in handy whenever you're working with hardware like this and it makes it a lot easier to unscrew everything. Don't lose those guys, they like to roll around. All right, so this shiny side is my outside, so I need to arrange that. Now I've already drawn, it might be hard to see, I've centered this and I drew a little mark where the center is, that way I can get it nice and centered as well. So I'm going to just kind of eyeball that, get it nice and center, and then I'm going to use my friction gel pen. This will go away with heat, and I'm just going to go around the inside of that and circle around it a couple times so I have a nice, section to go at. Now we're gonna need to cut a little bit more than that. Um, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to put that on here and I've lined up my center with the oval I already drew and now I'm going to mark in where the screw holes are gonna go because we're gonna want to be able to cut essentially out to where the screw holes are going to be. I'm gonna mark that a little bit and then sort of connect it to my oval. All right, now you need a really sharp pair of scissors. I've got my gingers here. The micro tips would also work really well. Go ahead and fold that over and give a little cut in there. I'm gonna cut straight out to where that screw hole is going to be. And then I'm gonna follow along that line that I marked. All right, we're gonna give this a little bit of a test run. I'm gonna see if it will fit inside and it will not. I need to make it a little bit bigger. So we're gonna make that a little bit wider. All right, let's try that again. All right, we're looking pretty good. I can definitely get that around now. You can see, so here's the center one that I pulled out that I marked. But then after that, I really just cut tiny little slivers off. You can barely even see them on camera because I didn't want it to get too large and we're not gonna be able to get a good hold on this. Now, there's two ways we can do this. We can uh, just screw it in there or you can also use some Guterman glue uh, to help keep that in place. I'm gonna add just a little bit here to help keep that. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around uh, the edges here and help keep that in place. All 
All right, so I've got that installed. It is pretty well centered. It is looking good. I'm gonna make just a couple little adjustments now before that glue sets. If you do get any of the glue out, you can kind of pick it off once it dries. Um, but I, it, the glue is a great step and this lasts forever. I have not used this in maybe a year and it still is good and flowing nicely. So this will last you a really, really long time. All right, so now we're gonna move on to our outside pockets. So you're gonna have a lining piece that does not have have any interfacing on it and an outside piece that does. And you'll notice when you lay them right on top of each other that the lining piece is longer. That's so it can have a little bit of an accent and set that pocket out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip these guys right sides together. And I'm going to, again, use those clips instead of pins for this one to keep everything together. Now, when you're sewing this, you're gonna to wanna to sew it with the lining side down. That's because it has no interfacing on it and it will be less likely to stretch if you have that in contact with the feed dogs than if you have the interfacing side down. If you adjusted your stitch length for top stitching, make sure you put it back to its regular stitch length for this section. And we're just gonna sew a quarter inch seam to join these. Now we're gonna flip the lining over and prepare it for top stitching. I found it a lot easier to press this open. And when you press open and push to the side, you wanna put your iron completely on the side you're pressing away from and then press it over. If you just plop it down right on top, then you're likely to press in a pleat and you're gonna have a hard time getting the fabric to stretch because you don't have as much of it because you have a little bit of it stuck underneath the fold. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over. And the easiest way I found to do this was to first take my clips and go ahead and get those guys right sides together. So that way I could make sure that everything is going to be the height that it needs to be when it's done. And I can catch all these seams in when we're sewing the pockets and bag together later. I'm gonna give that a spritz so that way I can get a nice good press in there. I'm gonna start with the center and I'm just pressing it down making sure that it's nice and flat and that everything is also still meeting with those edges at the bottom. And I'm gonna keep doing that as I work my way down the piece. Now for this next step, I'm gonna use a sewing machine foot that probably came with your sewing machine, but you don't really use very often if you're just quilt. So what this is, is it's got a little like rudder on the bottom and there's it jogs out just a little bit where the needle can stick through. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put that on my machine and I'm able to put that rudder right in that seam and go along it. And that way I can top stitch right in the seam allowance and it'll be almost invisible. If you do have your machine set to a quarter inch stitch, make sure you set it back to be right in the middle of your machine when you're using this foot. And again, I'm increasing that stitch length to 3.0. Now when I'm sewing, I'm not really looking at my needle. I'm looking at where that rudder is to make sure that it is right where that seam is. Now this just looks absolutely fabulous. You cannot even see that top stitching because it is so close and the thread matches that fabric. That is the accent so well. So if you have had trouble where that just is not making your bag look as professional as you want, go search out that foot and find it. Before we go any further, we have to insert the male side of our twist lock in only one of the outside pockets. So I've already made a mark halfway in between the length here and I made it about a half inch down. The pattern doesn't specify where it needs to be, but that seemed like a good spot for me. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put the template on here. And let's see, there's six little bits in there, so I want that to be nice and centered over there. And then I'm gonna take my marking pen and I'm gonna mark a line right in the outside of those slits because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our prongs in through there when we're done and then fold those over and that's what's gonna keep it in place. All right, so what you wanna do here is you wanna unfold this so that way your lining fabric that we're not gonna cut through that. And what we're going to do is we're going to very carefully just cut through that. You can take your pointy end of your scissors, you can kind of just give it a poke to get through a little bit and then you can widen that up a little bit. Now I can insert the prongs in 
to those slits that we cut out. Come around to the other side, slide this over. Make sure you push it all the way down and then just fold these over. All right, that's it. That's all there is to it. Now we're going to attach it to our large pocket. I've already measured in uh, to the marking indicated in the pattern so that I can center my pocket on top of that. So I'm gonna get that nice and in alignment. And then I'm gonna clip that in place. And then I'm gonna stitch around in the seam allowance, which means an eighth of an inch stitch. I'm gonna start a little bit above, go all the way to the bottom, and then come back up, obviously leaving this part open so we can put our hand inside the pocket. Make sure you set your machine back to that eighth of an inch stitch and that your seam allowance or your stitch length is set back to the regular stitch length. For me, it's 2.0. I'm gonna start off by back stitching a little bit to give that a little bit extra stability because there's a little bit of extra stress to have in our pockets. I'm gonna stitch down. Hey guys, we're popping in here real quick from a video, another video I'm filming to show you a mistake I made so you don't do it as well. So when you're sewing, you wanna make sure that once you have your pocket, your small pocket sewn on here, before you attach your handle, you're gonna to wanna to sew it to your bag body. You're gonna stitch all the way around the edges. Then you're gonna sew on your handles. And what that will do is it will make sure that you have four pockets on the outside. So you'll have one here that's created by sewing your handles on two on the outside, and then your tiny little pocket. If you do it like you're about to see on the video where you just sew your handles on before you sew your body, what you're gonna end up with is one large pocket over here. Now, if you've got file folders and things like that that you like to take with you and it's large, that might be something you might like. But if you don't wanna end up like that and you'd rather have the four pockets like we did on the other side, you're gonna make sure that you do as I say and not as I did. All right, so now I'm just going to do a stitch with in the seam allowance going all the way around the entire outside. So that way my lining pieces are nice and connected to my outside. So what I did is I marked using my friction gel pen, the center of my bag right in that seam allowance. And then I adhered to the measurements in the pattern to mark lines where my straps are going to go. So I know how to line those up. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put it so that the fold side is marking, meeting with that line. That way the fold side will face out when you're wearing the bag. And I'm gonna clip that in place. I'm gonna follow the line up and then I'm going to clip it in place at the top as well on both sides. That way it won't be less likely to shift on me as I go. I'm gonna repeat on the other side. So now on both sides, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stitch up in that eighth of an inch seam allowance up to where the edge is right here. I'm gonna stop right before where that little accent piece is. And then I'm gonna stitch over and come back down. You wanna try as much as you can to stay right on that seam allowance and you wanna go over it two to three times. I always do three because I have had these handles tear off and it's not so fun to fix. It, it can be fixed, but you wanna use as sturdy as you can at this point. And so just go over that three times. Again, you're gonna increase your top stitch to 3.0. The trick here is to go real nice and slow so that way you can go right over that same line and just keep building up those threads without making it look all sloppy. Time to go around a second time. go around a third time. So if you're following along with the instructions, you're probably like, Stephanie, you forgot a step and you're right, I did. But it can totally be done now. So there is a back part as well. And what we need to do is align that pocket on top of it. Typically you would do this before you attach uh, your handle to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go ahead and clip this together at my corners and then along the bottoms and then my sides. 
And now I'm gonna do that eighth of an inch stitch around the whole thing to secure it and have it ready to go. So you're gonna to wanna to do this before you attach your handle if you're watching this at home. Uh, but if you have followed along with me step by step, it's not gonna be the end of the world if you do it at this point now. You're just gonna have a little bit extra bulk right here. No big deal. So now we're going to attach our bag bottom. I'm also using the wax canvas for that. And again, I'm just gonna clip this because this stuff is really thick. I do not want pinholes going through it I would just rather use the clips make sure you switch back to your regular quarter inch stitch for this section and I'm going to reinforce my stitches at the front and back of each seam now when you come to the section where the handle is I just like to slow down a little bit you're going through a lot of seams there but just help it go a little easier all right, we're gonna end by reinforcing that seam again. Now, if you're not using wax canvas, you're gonna use an iron for this step, but because I am, I can just fold it over and it will hold that fold very nicely, which is wonderful. You do not wanna iron it, you'll get wax off on your iron. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch stitch on the bag bottom, and I'm gonna increase that to a 3.0 top stitching length. You have a lot going on here, so you may need to be doing some maneuvering of the bag, kind of if you were doing a quilt, in order to get it to go under your sewing machine throat as you're working. Just focus on keeping the edge of your presser foot even with the edge of your bag bottom fabric where that seam is, so that you get a nice even top stitch going all the way across. That'll make your bag look more professional. So I'm gonna take my bag half that has the male side of that twist lock and I'm just gonna set it to the side for now. And I'm gonna take my bag half that does not have anything on that outside pocket and I'm just gonna put it so it's right side up and then I'm gonna put the right side of my flap facing down. Now the way to tell what the right and wrong side is, is the right side is not going to have screws on it. So when I have the wrong side up, I can see my screws right there. I'm just gonna center it in between those handles and then I'm gonna clip that in place. And then when you sew, you can just flip your handle back, start a little bit before and end a little bit after, reinforcing those seams and sewing an eighth of an inch stitch. So now we're going to install the zippered pocket for the lining. This bag has tons and tons of pockets and it's always good to have little compartments on the inside. Now you're gonna follow the instructions in the pattern for marking out your section where your zipper is going to be. Now I'm not gonna show you how to mark this on camera because you need to purchase the pattern in order to get that info. But essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure down from the top and you're gonna mark your first line and your second line and your third line. And then you're going to match that up and this is going to be what we're going to sew around the outside and then we're gonna cut down the center and into those corners. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip everything over and I'm using this fun bunny print which is directional. Now, if you want your bunnies to be face up when you get your inside pocket, then it needs to be going in the pocket section needs to be pointing down um, when you have your right sides together. I know that sounds weird, but it, it absolutely works out best that way. I've got my bunnies facing up for my bag lining, and then I have my pocket facing down, and I'm gonna center that as best I can. It's not important that you measure that exactly, but you do want your edges to be nice and in alignment there. Now I'm going to clip at the tops, in the center, and then do the same thing on the bottom. Now, just because I screwed this up when I was doing my first one, uh, when I was practicing for this, uh, what you wanna do is make sure that when you put your fingers on the outside of where you've marked, that you've got plenty of room on the sides where your pocket is, otherwise it gets a little dicey when you're sewing out those seams a little bit later. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stitch around the outside of this uh, zipper area. Now, I found it easier to stay on the stitching line when I had my needle in the center position rather than in the quarter inch stitch setting. So what I'm gonna do is instead of starting right on the corner because that could give it some stress, is I'm gonna start a little bit of the way in and I'm just gonna start on that top line and work my way around. All 
All right, when I get back to where I started, I'm just gonna sew a couple inches beyond to make sure that everything is good to go, staying on that original stitch line. This is also a really good time to flip over and make sure that you've got a good amount, I've got a couple inches here, on either side of that zipper, so that way I'll be able to sew these seams together with no problem. All right, now at this point, what you can do is you can take a rotary cutter and you can cut just straight down that line. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my scissors to get it started and cut by hand. Now when you get to this triangle, you wanna go straight up to the point, and then you wanna cut into the corners, but do not go beyond your stitching line or your threads are gonna fray over time. All right, so you can take your clips off now. What we're going to do is we're going to pull the entire lining fabric through to the other side of the interfacing. So just grab it, pull it through. The bigger side is the easier one to get through first and then you can flip the top side through. All right, at this point, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna start pressing. What might be helpful as you press is this is still going to be in an alignment with your bottom. So if you take and you give it a little clip, it might be a little easier for you to get everything laying nice and flat as you work. I'm gonna start with this top, and I'm just gonna press as I go here with the tip of my iron to get that nice and flat. Once I'm pretty certain I've got that folded well, I'm gonna go ahead and remove those clips so I can put the iron flat down. I also am gonna spray the top edge here because that'll help me get a really nice fold there. Now you notice I'm not going all the way to the corner, so I still have some work to do on those. So I'm just kind of working on that top area for right now. All right, I've got this top seam really well, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the clips back in so that it doesn't get jostled around as I work on the other seams. All right, next I'm gonna work on this bottom. And I'm just working to fold that seam back first. Got that pretty well, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the center of that seam again and then work on my corners. What you're trying to do is get your pocket all the way to the back so you're not seeing that when you're looking at your zipper. All right, from here it's pretty easy to just fold back the rest. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of pulling from back there to pull that back and then just getting everything as flat as I can and hit it with iron. Spend some extra time there. Then repeat on this side. All right, I'm gonna give this one more spritz and press before we put in our zipper. Now I like to unzip my zippers going from right to left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my zipper pull over on the right side of my bag. And then I'm just gonna center it in here. Now you can use like steam a seam to get that set in place, or you can just kind of eyeball it like I'm going to do here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew an eighth of an inch stitch going all the way around. Again, I'm gonna start a little bit in. I'm not gonna start at the corner and I'm gonna go all the way around and then I'm gonna stitch past just a little bit beyond there. If you wanted, you could put a couple pins in. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start fairly close up here so that way I can get everything nice and where I want it to be. And then I can just stitch all the way down down, trying to keep this as centered as I can as I work. All right, so I've got my zipper lined up where I want it. So I'm starting real close to where that zipper pull is. And I'm just getting it started. And then I'm constantly gonna be adjusting just a little bit to make sure that I've got an even space between the edge of my uh, opening that I created for the zipper and the zipper teeth. All right, now I'm gonna stitch about an eighth of an inch beyond and turn everything. Make sure you go nice and slow over your zipper teeth. You can absolutely sew over them. You just gotta be a little careful. I'm gonna flip everything around again. 
Could do a little maneuvering to get everything underneath there, especially with all that interfacing. Now we're gonna stitch on the other side and if you've centered your zipper well, then you should have about the same amount of zipper tape showing um, on the other side of the teeth as you do on the side we already sewed. Now sometimes when you get to this point, my zipper pole has gone um, out beyond where the fabric is. So I wanna make sure that that is back in that opening so that way I don't accidentally stitch over that and then you can't open your bag. Plus you'll probably break your needle if you do that for sure. All right, I'm almost back to where I started. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch a couple of inches beyond where I started, staying on that stitch line, reinforce those stitches, and then I'm good to break my threads. All right, we've got our zipper, it works. Now all we need to do is trim off the extra on the outside and we are ready to finish up this pocket. I don't know about you guys, but that is one of the least intimidating zipper installs a, a way to do it period ever. It's just so easy. I usually trim up this tape a little bit too so that way there's a little bit less bulk. When you're doing this just make sure you're not cutting that pocket lining fabric. All right I'm going to take my clips off and then I'm going to take the bag bottom and I'm going to match it up with this bag top and we want to take just the lining pieces. We want to of the, the pocket. We do not want to sew the bag lining at this point and we're going to just sew the top to the bottom of that zippered pocket. All right, so I'm just going to stitch right across that pocket. Make sure to fold your lining out of the way for this step so you don't accidentally sew through that. And I am going to reinforce these stitches a little bit. This would not be a fun fix to make. All right, I'm folding that bag lining out of the way as I go to join that top and bottom. Now I'm just gonna give this a teeniest little press to have that all headed down along with the seam to have that pressed down and then hit the bottom of my pocket, which will make it easier to sew up my sides, which is what I'm doing next. All right, make sure you're folding back the edge of your lining so that way you're just working with that pocket. And again, I'm gonna reinforce those stitches at the beginning and the end to lock those in place. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, so we've got a lovely zippered pocket. The bunnies are going the correct direction and we are ready to get our bag assembled. This bag truly has everything. We also have a divided lining. So we're gonna take and we're gonna flip those guys right sides together and we're gonna sew across the top and the bottom only. The sides we're gonna leave open for turning and then we'll catch those when we sew our bag together. Again, I'm just gonna clip the tops because this is thick and this one also has that fusible batting on it. So we wanna make sure that uh, that most of it won't get caught in the seams so that way it's not so bulky but some of it might if you're using directional fabric like i am make sure both of the bunnies are pointing up when you place them right sides together since i'm going to be turning these seams i want to make sure that i reinforce the edges so they don't pop up when i flip it around right sides out all right so now we're just going to turn that inside out and reach through get that part coming through All right, I'm gonna flatten out these seams by hand first. What I like to do is kind of press it to get it, the seams pressed out as far as I can. With my fingertips, I kind of roll it and press. Now I'm gonna hit it with the iron and I am gonna use my steam mister because it did get a little wrinkly as I turned it right side out and I want it to be nice and pristine and beautiful. All right, we've got that nice and pressed. Now I'm just gonna top stitch along the long edges that we've already sewn. Again, we're leaving these sides nice and open. Increasing my stitch length to 3.0 for that top stitching. Now it's time to trim the corners of our bag pieces to get it ready for assembly. I've already marked off the design on here and that measurement is included in the pattern. And I'm just going to go ahead and clip up to the corner and then out. All right, so now we're ready for our final bag assembly. This is a very exciting point where it actually looks like a bag. So what I'm gonna do first is I've got my bag um, outside here and I've got it right sides up. I'm gonna pull that handle down so that way it is out of the way and I'm going to grab a lining piece. Now I'm gonna range that right sides together so that the right side of my lining is facing the right side of my 
outside of my bag, which sounds complicated, but basically if you remember right sides of fabric together, you're good. Now I'm gonna clip across the top and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam across the top side of the bag only, and I'm gonna do that for both halves. We just top stitched, so make sure you head back to your regular 2.0 stitch setting, and we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam, making sure to reinforce those stitches at the beginning and end. So this is why I'm really excited for this setup because for the first time ever, you're gonna be able to see the entire bag on our overhead camera. All right, so I wanna nest these seams. So on the side that does not have the flap, I'm gonna press that seam so that it is underneath the outside of the bag like that. And I'm just doing it by hand at this point. We'll give everything a really good press later. But for right now, with all that interfacing and everything, that will just go straight over. And you can hit it with iron for good measure if you want to. All right, I'm gonna set this one to the side and I'm gonna press the other one so that the seam is going underneath the lining side. That'll make for less bulk when we go to sew this together. Make sure to take some time when you are clipping these seams because one's going one way, one's going the other. So when you put these together, they should just lock in place and just nest right in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that in place and put a little clip on top of it to keep it steady. So make sure to take special care also when you are matching up the seams of where your bag body is meeting your bag lining. You want that to be nice and right on top of each other when you are sewing. So make sure you take your time with that on both sides. Pull that strap out of the way. It it's, can be very awkward at this point to get everything together, especially when you're using thick fabrics like we are and all the interfacing, but it's, it's totally doable. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start sewing about a half inch into the lining, and I'm gonna stitch all the way to the side and then stop. Then I'm gonna stitch the bottom and then I'm gonna stitch starting at the outside and then also stop about a half inch into the bag lining again. We don't wanna stitch the whole bag lining right now because we still have to put that divider in it and that's gonna come a little bit later. So we're gonna start with this. Make sure you reinforce your seams at the start and stop of all of them and you're using a quarter inch stitch for everything. Make sure when you are at the edges where we did that eighth of an inch stitch that you are stitching to the left of that. You should be if you're sewing a quarter inch stitch, but just in case you got a little wide with that eighth of an inch, do pay attention to that as you're on the sides with your pockets. All right, now it's time to insert our center divider and I'm gonna do it one side at a time to make it a little easier. So what I've done already is I've made a mark above where the corner is and that measurement is in the pattern. And I'm gonna line up the bottom of my divider with that line and I'm gonna put the other part of the lining on top to line up with the corner. Then I'm going to clip that in place so that I'm clipping through all of those layers. Now I'm gonna work my way up the side, making sure to catch all of my edges together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch starting a little bit before where I picked off. I might actually even start on the outside and I'm gonna stitch all the way down, reinforcing those stitches on both sides. Now you'll notice the divided liner is quite a bit shorter. That's because the bag is gonna come in when we sew our corners together. That's why I wanna do this one at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a pull over. It's gonna look a little awkward and it is a little, but it's not bad and we're in the home stretch so we can make it from here for sure. All right, so I'm gonna get that lined up nicely first. Get that corner together and pinned, clipped, whatever you're using. I like my clips for these projects. And then I'm gonna work my way up again and repeat. All right, now we're gonna sew in just a couple of inches on either side of the bottom. We just wanna get our corners started together, but we wanna leave this open to turn the entire bag inside out and then we'll stitch it closed by hand in the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I really want a big, big opening here. So I'm just gonna put a clip maybe just for the first two inches and that's all I'm gonna sew together because I know me, I will rip that seam open and I will have more to sew together than I want to. So I'm just gonna do a teeny little bit here. 
All right, so I'm just gonna stitch a little bit here, a little bit here, reinforce those stitches really, really well when you're on that inside, like three, four times, so that way you're less likely to rip it open when you're turning that bag. All right, our bag is a little bit of a hot mess at the moment, but it is about to look really cool. This is the last really awkward part to sew, and then you're ready to go. What you're gonna do is you're gonna grasp the corners and you're just gonna pull out to straighten that out. And then again, you wanna nest those seams. So just turn one one way and one the other. And it helps if you can get them going the same way on each side. And then I like to put a little pin at the start and end as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and get all of mine ready at the same time because I want this entire seam to be going this way. So I'm gonna, while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna do my other side as well. Pull that open and make sure that my seam is gonna be going to the left from that bag bottom. And that way everything will be nice and easier to lay nice and flat when we get it all going the correct way. All right, so I'm gonna get all my corners ready to sew and then I'm gonna just whip through them all and then we get the awkward business of turning it right side out, but then we have an amazing bag. All right, it's looking like an officially inside out bag. All right, I'm just gonna start sewing all those edges and again, just doing that quarter inch seam, reinforcing really well on all those corners. All right, I've got all my corners sewn. We are almost there. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna reach my hand through that bag opening to get all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna start pulling that out. And you wanna be gentle as you're doing this so that we don't rip those seams on the bottom. All right, we're at the stage where it is right side out, but it's still looking a hot mess. So what I do at this point is I'm gonna reach my hand in and I'm gonna shape the bag. I'm gonna make sure all those seams are pushed out and it's looking the way it's supposed to actually look. All right, it's not perfect, but I have all those corners pushed out. So now I'm gonna push the lining back in. Once you have it in, then you're gonna to wanna to push those corners out as well. All right, it's finally looking the way it's supposed to look. We do have one more step though. We've gotta get this top part really pressed good and do a nice top stitch around there. So I'm gonna start just by pressing it over and I think I'm gonna put some clips on as I do it just so that it kind of stays where I want it to be. What I'm really trying to do is get it so that everything in the lining is rolled back so that way we really don't see that from the outside. It coordinates beautifully but I don't want to see it until you're taking a peek inside that bag. All right now for this part we're just going to have to press it down and give it a press with the iron. I maybe can do a clip on the side of the flap. Now I'm gonna go around and take it to the iron and really press this seam super, super flat. I'm gonna use some seam to do it. And then we're gonna do our final top stitch. We're gonna top stitch around twice using that 3.0 to give it lots of extra stability. As I work my way around to press, I'm gonna remove the clips just while I'm pressing and then put them back on to help keep it nice and flat in the way I want it. Be careful when you're working around those straps, if you also are using wax canvas, you don't wanna get your iron on those. So I'm gonna start my top stitching in the back, right where that flap is, cause that's where people are gonna see the least. It's gonna be next to your body. I'm gonna go ahead and start and reinforce those stitches a little bit. And I'm gonna go around twice when I do this. And just go nice and slow and steady. You want nice, even top stitching so it looks as professional as possible. Make sure to keep those straps out of the way as you work. All right, I've made it around one time. Now I'm gonna go around one more time with that top stitching just to make it super secure. And then we are done with this bag. Well, we'll have to stitch the inside lining, but that's all I'm gonna be showing you on this one. As you go around the second stitch, try to make sure that you are right on top of that first line of stitching. 
All right, so here we have it. We have the completed all-around tote, which has eight exterior pockets, two inside zipper pockets, and a divided center. It turned out absolutely fabulous. The only thing you'll need to do that we didn't show on camera is stitch that binding closed. You can do it on your machine if you want, but I like to do it by hand. I think it looks more professional that way. And it just looks fabulous. And we'll show you a close-up in some of the photos, but you can see that the wax uh, treatment on the wax canvas does give it a little bit of a crinkle and white appearance. If you didn't like that, that was just from the process of turning it right side out, you could take a blow dryer to it and it would go away. But a lot of people like it because it kind of adds to the ruggedness of the bag look. Um, I think this is going to make a great diaper bag. Uh, if I ever get to bring the baby anywhere, hopefully it will happen in 2021 because it just will hold absolutely everything I need for myself and for her. Thanks so much for following along. Just a reminder that we do have kits for this and pretty much everything in it is reorderable. So if it is sold out when you go look at it, make sure you join the wait list because we probably will be able to bring it back at some point. Hopefully sooner rather than later if it sells out right away, which sometimes these kits do. Um, Again, the pattern is from So Many Creations. Love her, check out her stuff if you are into bags. We have a lot of tutorials on bags using her patterns as well. We'll link to the playlist in the video description down below. But this is a good one to do, especially if you're you know, planning a road trip. We did a road trip uh, to pick up a puppy and we brought everything with us so that we did not have to stop. And so this is a great way to get everything you need right then and there. Thanks so much for following along. I hope you enjoy this bag. I hope you make one for yourself. And if you love the way this looks, go grab a kit. Subscribe if you haven't over. And if you haven't subscribed to our email list, make sure you do that too. You get a 10% off coupon that you can use on your first purchase over on shop.quiltladdersanonymous.com. And until next time, happy quilting. And of course, I ran out of bobbin thread on the last ass. That would happen.